One of the reasons that uh, I have, uh, I'm happy to have discovered the sport of golf a few years ago, I didn't want to play. Uh, Ron uh, uh, Egger kept saying, come on and play. And I said, no, I'm too busy. I don't have time, whatever. But I gave in eventually and went to play with him uh, some three years ago and found it quite enjoyable. The fellowship was okay, but the golf. <laughs> and one of the reasons for that, aside from enjoying the fellowship, of course, is that I, I don't enjoy normal types of exercise. I don't know about you, but I'm just one of those persons. For me personally, to go to the gym and to repeat the same exercise over and over again, I just can't get into that. I know some do and they enjoy it. Some love to run you know, 10, 20 miles, not me. I don't like to do that that type of exercise. So, um, you know, golf is a, golf is a great, uh, get you outdoors, get some fresh air, it's a mild form of, of exercise. Now don't get me wrong, you know, I, I love what exercise does. It prevents uh, you know, unnecessary weight gain, produces good health, also gives you an emotional boost. You know, when you get out and get some fresh air, exercise, it, you know, it helps. This is why I like to play golf. It's a mild form of exercise that gets me moving around outside in the fresh air with a low risk of injury. Now, uh, golf is not rough on your body, but it's quite hard on your pride. That I can assure you. So I mention all of this aversion to physical exercise because in a lot of ways it is similar to the distaste we sometimes have for spiritual exercise. That's my point, that's how I get there. We don't always like spiritual exercise. You see, just as we need to exercise our physical muscles to remain strong and healthy, we also need to exercise the spiritual muscle of faith in order to remain spiritually healthy. Having a strong faith muscle is important because it is what you count on during times of stress and trouble and loss. Having a weak and flabby faith muscle in times of distress can lead to panic and depression, cynicism, and worst of all, loss of trust in God. If your faith muscle is not strong when the trouble hits, you know, the thing that you pay at the end for having you know, not a very strong faith muscle is you lose faith altogether. And so this evening I'd like to describe to you how Jesus developed the faith muscle in His apostles. Now this faith building program has been used ever since to help Christians build up their faith muscle and protect them from poor spiritual health. So in the book of Mark, Gospel of Mark, Mark summarizes the spiritual exercise approach used by Jesus in chapter four. So if you have your Bibles, go to chapter four. We'll read that in a moment. Give you a little background here. At this time, Jesus had spent a considerable amount of effort at teaching His disciples about faith. Okay? He had taught them about faith and how it worked and what it produced. Once the theoretical part was given, it was time to enter the very practical part of the faith building program. Like you know, the, your coach is going to tell you how to do the exercise and be careful of this and he'll demonstrate it for you and you're really understanding, oh I get the exit, but you don't get any benefit until you, you pick up the dumbbells and you start going, right? Same thing, Jesus has taught them about faith and what faith does and what is necessary and all that business, but now the rubber's going to meet the road. He's now going to put them into the faith building exercise. And so Mark describes the scene as Jesus and the twelve enter a boat in order to cross over the Sea of Galilee. And they, uh, in the boat, we will see the four steps that Jesus uses to build the faith muscle in His apostles. I want you to see if you can spot them, okay? So Mark chapter four, beginning in verse 35. It says, on that day when evening came, He said to them, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Him along with them in the boat, just as He was, and other boats were with Him. And there arose a fierce gale of wind, and the waves were breaking over the boat so much that the boat was already filling up. Jesus Himself was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. 
And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind died down and it became perfectly calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? They became very much afraid and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obeyed him? So were you able to spot the four steps? Here they are, four steps, faith building muscle. Number one, he brings you into a storm. Step number one, he brings you into a storm. For the apostles, it was an actual storm at sea. Normally, they would have felt quite assured on the water because many were experienced fishermen and they were used to such things. But what was happening was beyond their strength. What was happening was beyond their expertise, beyond their courage. They were in real danger. You know, when a professional fisherman is afraid, <laughs> be afraid, right? Well, that's what a trial is. That's what a test is. Something that takes you into deep water where what you have and what you control is not enough for what you are facing. That's a trial. Whatever it is, it's different for each person because what frightens each person is different. For some, it's serious illness. For others, it's family trauma. Still others feel threatened by any financial crisis. Whatever the storm is, it's a threat. It's an enemy. It is a challenge that is bigger and stronger than you are. This is usually the first step the Lord permits you to experience in exercising your faith muscle. He leads you into a storm. The second step. The second step is He allows the storm to actually test your faith. You see, we go through a lot of trials and tribulations in life that test our love, that test our strength, that examine our goodness, our patience. But in the Lord's faith building program, He allows something to come into your life that will bully its way through all of these things and strike at the very core of your spiritual being, which is your faith. Because the point of the test is not how kind you are or how patient you are, but rather if you really do believe in God. I mean really, do you believe? You see, faith in God is the ultimate test because the Bible says that God is over the creation, Job 42 and two. The Bible says that God is over the affairs of nations, Job 12, 23. That God is over man's birth and lot in life, Job 14, 5. That God is over success and failure in life, Luke 1, 52. That God is over every single event, good and bad in your life, Matthew 10, verse 30. This means that every storm is scheduled by Him. Every storm is controlled by Him and every storm finds its ultimate meaning in Him. Do you not think that when Jesus got into the boat initially with them and they set off, He didn't know that a storm was coming? And yet went to lie down and take a nap in the boat? The storm tested the faith of the disciples in the boat not their seamanship. The Lord's building program is designed to test your faith. You may become depressed, you may become angry, you may become discouraged and afraid and fed up and tired and dazed and confused during the test. But in the end, despite everything you felt and thought and experienced, the question will be, do you still believe? Do you still believe? 
I, I used to say this and still do to our children when they share with me an experience. Oh wow, what a day it was today. So-and-so did this and they forgot that and that messed me up and the boss was mad at me. And wow, it couldn't go any worse. And I tell them, yeah, so it's about faith. What do you mean it's about faith? It's about faith. You think God cares? You get a, you're doing two hours of overtime? <laughs> That you won't be able to go bowling tonight because you had two hours of overtime because some guy, you think that's what it's about? It's always about faith. Everything's about faith. He hasn't brought you to step two until you have been to this point. Step one, he brings you into the storm. Step two, he lets the storm test your faith. The next step in the faith muscle building program, number three, he leaves you in the storm. <laughs> he leads you there, he lets it test you, and then he leaves you there. I mean, he just, he leads you there, lets it test you, and then he leaves you there. You know, the apostles sensed the danger and tried everything they knew before finally coming to wake him up. They didn't come to wake him up so that he could give them some, you know, some uh, boating tips. <laughs> they came to wake him up because they were about to die. <laughs> they were about to capsize and drown. At any time, he could have stopped the wind and the waves. At any time. He didn't even have to wake up. I mean, you know, he didn't have to open his eyes and say, you know, he didn't have to say to the water, hush, be still, be calm. He didn't have to say anything. Had he willed it, it would have stopped. He could have just slept all the way through it. But what did he do? He allowed his disciples to remain in trouble until the very last minute. You know, people caught in the storms of life usually cry out to God, why me? Why this? Why now? Or how long, Lord? Or how much, Lord? Or how will I survive, Lord? They want to know about the condition of their bodies or the duration of the storm, when the real issue is the condition of the faith. They don't realize that in the end, the only thing that matters, whether you live or die, is the strength of your faith. That's why I say it's always about faith. And so part of the conditioning program includes a period of time in the eye of the storm because that's where weak faith is strengthened and true faith is revealed. The disciples were no longer afraid after Jesus stopped the wind and the waves. But a sincere faith tested and tried in the many storms of life becomes strong enough to give a person courage even at the worst moment. Even at the worst moment. Storms, not smooth sailing, but it's storms that build your faith. If your faith doesn't awaken or grow stronger in the storm, then whatever happened, happened for nothing. That's the sad part about unbelievers and the suffering that they go through. I feel genuine pity and you know, sympathy for those who do not believe in God, do not you know, have Christ as their Lord, but they nevertheless suffer illness or tragedy. You know? And what, what comes of it? Nothing. They get through it somehow and just keep on going. Jesus leaves you in the storm so your faith will build endurance and hope and unshakable trust in Him. That's what the storm was about to begin with. And once that happens, then the final step in the building of the faith muscle takes place. 
The final step is He leads you to calm waters. He, leads you, he led you into the storm, He leads you to calm waters. The apostles saw with their own eyes that the wind died down, the boat stopped sinking, and the waves retreated. James describes this moment or status as one of maturity and completeness. When he writes in James uh, chapter one, verses two to four, he says, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various storms. Is that what he says? Now he says various trials, but he could have put storms. Knowing that the testing of your what? Your love? Your patience? Your kindness? No. He says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result. What does that mean? That means you're going to have to endure for a while. You're going to have to be in the storm for a while. He says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Complete. Your faith is complete. Your faith isn't complete when you know everything there is to know about the Bible because I'll tell you it'd be a long storm. <laughs> your faith is complete when you get to the point in your life that no matter what the storm is, you continue to believe. That's maturity. You continue to love. You continue to hope. That's maturity. Every storm eventually blows over and such is the case in the storms of life. But the ones, but the ones who have come through with stronger faith, the storms that we experience and come out of with stronger faith, faith they change us for the better. Oh, our bodies or our bank accounts may be in tatters. We think, we think successfully growing through the storm means that the boat didn't suffer any damage or our bank account is fine. And uh, you know, they got all the cancer. Maybe going through the storm is simply the doctor saying to you, we can't do anything. You're going to die in three months. The storm was not knowing and going through the tests and the trauma and this and that. Maybe the calm water as well, at least I know what's going to happen. We sometimes think the storm, the end of the storm, means that everything goes well. Well, that's in Hollywood, you know, everything, happy ending. It's not life. So our bodies or bank accounts may be in tatters, but our inner selves, the place where the spirit dwells, remains peaceful, remains assured. That's because the Lord is creating within us a faith that cannot be moved, a faith that cannot be changed, a faith that cannot be denied, a spiritual muscle that is strong and able to meet any challenge. And when we reach that place of calm water with Him, we also can sleep calmly in the boat called life, even through the storms when they are raging all around us. Full maturity or calm water is knowing we need God and that He will be there for us at every moment, good or bad, calm water, stormy seas. I believe every person here tonight needs Jesus Christ. Some need Him to clear their guilty consciences of sin and shame. And of course, He'll do this for you if you come believing that He is the Son of God, and repenting of your sins, allow Him to wash you clean in the waters of baptism. And some need to renew their commitments to being good and faithful servants. He will take you back, He'll put you to work again if you come repenting of your unfaithfulness and receive His forgiveness through prayer. And then some need a stronger faith. 
because the storms that they face at this moment are making them afraid and making them discouraged. If that's the case, He will strengthen you if you let Him lead you through the storm to the calm water of a mature faith. Whatever your need is from Jesus this evening, I encourage you to make those needs known to us now as we stand and as we sing our song of encouragement.